Stasa23 here, and today's night therapy, I just got a package in. Uh, believe it or not, USPS just dropped off a package on a Sunday. That never happens, especially not to me, and I didn't even know they did that on Sundays. But I just got uh, a package that has uh, had a bunch of knives that I had sent off to my buddy uh, BGM Knives, uh, John. Um, it does some amazing work, and he does regrinds. He does awesome fixed blades. I have one of his fixed blades as well. And I have sent some knives off to him to get uh, regrinded in the past. I think I sent three of them to him last time. And I loved his work. <laughs> um, I also, you know, sent, uh, I, I, I used to send him to Transparent Knives. But I know he's now, uh, you know, super busy with the, the reblades. So <laughs> there are other people in the community that do great jobs if, if you get yours uh, reground from somebody, leave that down in the comments because, you know, there's uh, lots of love to go around. I can promise you that. But I love his work. And let's get into it. And I'll tell you why I ended up doing a regrind on the knife. Um, real quick, this one is off to the side. This is the first one that um, I kind of thought about. And it's a fixed blade. This is a custom fixed blade. I don't remember the actual designer. I picked it up off of, I think, Knife Center. I thought it looked cool. This is the same designer that did, uh, you'll, you'll know what it looks like, the Kaiser fixed blade, the Kaiser maybe Bowie. This one right here. There's a maker's mark. Why can I not remember that? Ugh, if I remember, I'll put it on the screen. Well, I bought that one because I loved <laughs> the production uh, version that Kaiser did. I actually reviewed it on the channel, and being this is a custom version of it, I, I thought, wow, I want to try that one out. And it was in CTS XHP Steel. That got me excited. It's in Crosscut Micarta. That got me excited. I got the knife, and, you know, I'm not trying to knock on anybody's work, okay? Um, I, I, I He put a lot of work into this, and... Uh, I love the overall profile of the knife. This could have been one of his first uh, knives he did. And I know it's a custom, so, you know, it's going to be a little rough. But this is a smaller fixed blade. I mean, it's a good, it's an EDC fixed blade size. That's, that's why it kind of drew me to it. And <clears throat> it was like 30 thousandths behind the edge and almost like 40 thousandths out, out of the tip. It, the tip was kind of non-existent. So... I knew it had potential, and I ended up sending this one off to him to get a deep hollow grind, and he does, John does some amazing, amazing work. Look at that. Nice and clean lines. The transition up here is very clean, and you can get him to uh, grind the swedges uh, on it to make it, you know, look uniform, or you don't have to. I, I think it looks great. Ties in the lines perfectly. Now the knife has a tip to it and a nice deep hollow on it. Beautiful hollow grind. Look, you can look down right here and see. Nice and then let's see if I can make it focus. I want to focus on everything behind me. But there you go. Much thinner than it was before. I'll get my calipers out real quick and check it. All right. Not that it really matters. Like I said, because I've already uh, did a little cutting with it in man oh man. 17 thousandths. So it went from 30 thousandths to 17 thousandths and a nice deep hollow. So I'm going to sharpen it a good while before it starts to widen up. I mean, you can see it's, it's going to go a good ways up that almost to about right here before it'll start to widen up. You know, this is why I like a nice thinly ground knife, especially a thin hollow grind is because there's, there's several reasons. First of all, they're a lot easier to sharpen because you have a much smaller edge bevel. You're not, you know, if you want to put a 17 degree edge bevel on it, it's not going to come up to here on your knife and look, you know, ridiculous. You're going to keep a nice, uh, you know, decent size uh, edge bevel, primary edge, be edge bevel on the knife. And <laughs> I, it's hard to, it's hard to understand if you have not, use a knife that has very good uh, thin geometry on it. It is night and day difference. And I I totally understand if if it's a hard use knife, you know, 
Twenty thousand is behind the edge. That's more than enough if the heat treats proper. And unless you're doing something stupid with your knife, uh, you know, for a work knife, twenty thousand is I think is good. Um, anything over that is kind of overkill, <laughs> in my opinion. I mean, I've used knives hard. I've tested them hard. And y'all, I mean, y'all have seen some of the stuff I've done, and it, it doesn't hurt the edge. Um, even at twenty thousands, you know, I've sure I've, I've banged on knives at twenty thousands, and they still held up just fine. The the difference in cutting the the resistance is so just is so satisfying when you use a thinly ground knife. So let's pull out the next one. Uh, let's see. I put them in <laughs> this new uh, Wii case. These things are really cool. You can get them uh, if you buy a Wii knife right now. I think on Blade HQ if that's still going on, and you might even better buy these. They hold six knives, and I like how this thing flaps down so you can get a hold of them. And let's go to knife number two. So this one right here is the Serge Panchenko. Uh, I think it's called the EDC. And this was another one that didn't really make sense uh, as far as the grind on it because it was super thick. And now look at this. God, it's work. That's, that's just oil. Let me, uh, let me wipe that off. He uh, oils them up really nice, so you know you don't want you don't want a freshly uh, ground blade coming back with rust on it. But he he does a pretty nice finish on here, so I don't I think it's going to be way less success, susceptible to uh, corrosion than it was before. Because if you see the flats, it had that like blasted stone wash finish on it, and and I had rusting going on on this knife. But he did that top swedge. Look how beautiful. His work is, I mean, top notch. And now to feel it from here down, he put a hollow on here to feel it. This thing was rather thick. I don't recall exactly how thick this one was, but it was not fun to cut with at all in the least. Let's see. And I'm doing this behind the camera, so it could be a lot less than what I'm, you know, 14 thousandths now. This thing, I, I cut with this one a little while ago too. This thing slices, this one put the biggest smile on my face so far. Uh, I love the knife. I love the action on this knife. It's so watery smooth. Love that hole. I love the knife. It's just that grind killed it for me because this is not really a hard use knife by any means. I mean, it might have a hard use feel to it, but I don't know. It, it's... I'm not, I'm not using this thing for any, you know, I'm not putting it in a center block to, to wiggle it out or anything. I like to use my knives to cut stuff. Whenever I was working, you know, I, I would use, you know, a little bit heavier duty knives, mainly cold steels and stuff like that, because I was hard on them. I would pry things up that I shouldn't have, and I knew they could handle it. But if you're not doing that kind of stuff, then you're missing out, you know, with these without a nice thinly ground knife now if the heat treat on the knife is garbage you know if you sharpen it and it's gummy there's no point in getting it reground because um it's it's not going to hold a good edge anyway and i also have a knife that came in that i pre-ordered a long time ago that i'm excited to show y'all all right <laughs> the next one is this beauty this is the mcneese pm mac uh three inch and another one that I love, it's just a three inch knife. Uh, definitely not a hard use knife in my opinion. And if I want to use it hard, I, can, I got the, the bigger brother. Um, and I'm sure I'll get this one reground eventually because the, the, the action on these uh, McNeese knives are phenomenal. And they're riding on uh, stainless steel uh, bearings, which I, it doesn't make, it makes more of a difference with the detent ball, but now, okay, this is another one that did not, the tip was not existent. It was just a fat, like, blob right here. <laughs> now it has a tip because he, he ground that down. Has a nice, whoo, this one's nice and thin right here in the back. Love that. And another one that cuts beautifully. Still has that same beautiful action. Love those, uh, that misbehaving scales. I got this one at Blade Show a year or two back. And I put the artisan clip on there just because I didn't like the, the bent clip, even though that one looks kind of cockeyed. I, I don't know. But another one that just wowed me. Let's see what this one's at. <laughs> I think this one, if I recall, I think they were it was like 25,000 behind the edge. 
just not not that fun to to use. Yeah, now it's at twelve thousandths, and I think it's even thinner than that. I just can't see. Yeah, around let's call it twelve thousandths. Way way better, way better in my opinion. And uh, you know, as long as I'm not abusing the edge. Uh, you know, a lot of us probably only cut cardboard, most of all, unless you're using it as a work knife and totally get it because I did that at one point. But, you know, when I'm not testing the knives, the, the most stuff I usually have to cut that I have to cut is cardboard, string, plastic, uh, open up a package for my daughter. You know, that's just real life. I, I go out of my way to use my knife on things that I, I wouldn't need to, but, you know, other than that, <laughs> I'm not I'm not having to do any combat, you know, stuff with my knife or anything. Now this one, uh probably the most excited about this one because I I love this knife. I bought I bought two of them. I loved it so much. And that is my attention to detail. Uh I think this is the Mark 1, I, I think. And man oh man. Woo! So <clears throat> this is a full custom. I got this at Blade Show the year before last. And I, I still have this compound ground one if I want to use a hard use as a hard use knife. This is in 3V steel. This one is beautiful as well. But I can see now, you know, I may end up getting a slicer grind or something done to this one because it, it's pretty darn thick. Let me let me show you something. And I might not go as thin as I went on that one, but Look, 25 thousandths at that tip. No, close to the tip. Let's see what the actual tip is. 32 thousandths at the tip. And you kind of see what I mean. It, it doesn't really have a dedicate, like a tip. It's kind of like a, a meeting place up there. And that's fine. Like I said, I, I still enjoy the knife. It cuts really good back here. And you can actually see that transition right here where it humps up right here for your heavier cutting task. Um, but now this one, this one definitely put the biggest smile on my face whenever I went to, to use it. Now, this one already had a hollow grind on it and it felt thin, but when it got down to the actual termination point, it was, I think it was 30,000, 28, something like that. And let's see. Uh, yeah. 17 thousands now. Woo! Loving it. Yeah, he did such, such a good job. So happy with his work. Definitely can highly recommend him. Like I said, there's there's other awesome people that do great work. Um, this is just the only two people that I've actually gotten regrinds done from is uh, BGM Knives and uh, Brian from Transparent Knives. And both of those guys I highly recommend because they, they, they take pride in what they do and they do a heck of a job. Now, I got one knife that came in, <laughs> um, I think Saturday, and that is my Grambo Knives Assetto. Uh, if you didn't see this one, I reviewed this a while back on the channel. He had this one in the rust. He did a pre-order for him. I don't know if he has any available on his site or not. You may want to go check. I'll try to leave link. I'll leave links to BGM Knives stuff down in the description. And I'll also leave a link to Grambo Knives. This one I just thought was stunning. Got a nice uh, stone wash finish on there. I think this is a hollow too as well. Yeah, I think so. And uh, I love the micarta. It's nice and comfortable in hand. Yeah, that's a beauty. Here's... Here's the, 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 the detail car, but it says details and there's nothing on it. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that, but uh, yeah, I guess it does. It just doesn't have like the blade steel and stuff on here, but it's on the backspacer. They're numbered. Mine's number 17, M390. Uh, cool card though. So yeah, there you go. That is uh, the my mail call for this weekend. Um, let me know what you think about regrinds. I personally think a reground knife, I mean, you know, a knife that's thin is better for doing everyday cutting tasks because it's going to stay sharper longer because if you have a nice thin, thin geometry, even when that knife dulls, it's still going to cut stuff like cardboard, uh, fruit, it's still going to cut it. And 
<laughs> you know, when it's starting to reach that dullness, it's going to feel like it's still sharp. Unlike a knife that is, you know, like this, that is like 25 thousandths behind the edge or I forgot, somewhere in that area. When this one starts to go dull, it's going to abruptly go dull and it's not going to cut anything. So love to hear y'all thoughts and opinions on that. You know, like I said, I get there is a place for heavier duty knives. I have some and I like them. Um, I just tend to grab the slicier knives when I'm actually going to use a knife. Uh, that's just me. <laughs> Spider Co. does a good job. They're not always super thin behind the edge, but they, they always have at least a 15 degree uh, edge bevel. That is also a big deal. If you have a thinly ground knife and you have a very obtuse bevel, it's going to cut like garbage. If you have a bevel that is 15 degrees to 17 degrees, it's going to cut night and day difference, uh, even, even a thicker bladed knife behind the edge at least. All right, so there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing, amazing Sunday. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.